All right, now the question raised today is why won't the RCMP release the so-called martyr video, the video Bebo uh, made before he stormed Parliament Hill? We know they will not uh, release that security tape video of what happened inside Parliament. As the government tries to clamp down on homegrown extremists, do police need more powers to make preventative arrests? Lots of questions today. Joining me now from the foyer of the House of Commons, James Bazan, the Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of National Defence. Peter Julian is the NDP House Leader. And Roger Kuzner is a liberal employment critic. Good to see you all, gentlemen. Mr. Bazan, uh, what's your view? Uh, the RCMP originally said it would be releasing the full video Bebo made before he stormed Parliament Hill. Now uh, they've backtracked on that, saying eventually only transcripts will come out. Should that video be made public? Well, <clears throat> until the RCMP wrap up their investigation, uh, uh, we'll let them, um, you know, deal with with uh, how they want to deal with releasing evidence to the public. Uh, you know, I think we want to see uh, some sort of balance between uh, the, the right of the public to know about this historic uh, terrorist attack, uh, but also at the same time, we don't want to glorify uh, this act and and uh, really inspire others to do the same. I mean, originally, obviously, they said he would. Uh, release those uh, that videotape now we don't think that uh, just out of interest what about the security tapes what happened inside the hall of honor you know many people have said you know the world watched for example the zapruder films of the the assassination of kennedy we've seen these kind of uh videos that are, are very horrifying I, I grant you but should the public see those security tapes as to what happened inside the hall of honor as we just reported and again, I'd, I'd say that, you know, we'll let the, the police make their, their decision after their investigation on how they want to release this evidence back to the public. Uh, but to, and find that, that balance, because we don't want, uh, you know, this type, I know, I know in talking to some of the security guards here, they don't want in any way, shape or form to glorify uh, what has happened here. And uh, that the, you know, all the, the signs that we've experienced, the, the bullet holes, the, 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 the potch marks in the wall, uh, to er everything be uh, repaired back to the original state. And I can, I, I, I understand that. And I, I think that uh, the police agencies that are investigating this uh, also have some of those same concerns. Right. All right, uh, let me get Peter Julian. What, what's your view? Should that video, uh, first of all, the first video, the so called martyr video that was supposed to be released, should it be released? Well, I think the public does have a right to know what he, he said in that video. And, and as I've, I've mentioned before on your show, Evan, I, I went back just, just after the, the attack on Parliament Hill, went uh, to the mosque that he attended, which is in my riding in, in Burnaby, New Westminster. And the, the folks who uh, knew him were very concerned about his mental health issues, about his drug addiction. Uh, he was seeking help and no help was uh, made available to him at that time. And so I, I think there are questions in the public mind. As you know, uh, the last poll that came out showed that more Canadians feel this is an issue of mental health and, and drug addiction than it is an issue of terrorism. You that still, was the won't, call, you still won't call it a terrorist attack? Well, we, we have, have concerns. I've spoken to the people that knew him best. They saw it as very much an issue of drug addiction, uh, an issue of mental health, that he was seeking concerns. He wanted to be put into jail so he could, he could clean up. So I, I think something like this, uh, a video, uh, the transcripts, is, is something that is part of the public domain and the public interest. And there are many Canadians who feel that this is a, a mental health issue, a drug addiction issue. And as a society, I think it's important for Canadians to know what it is that he said. Whether that's released as a video or is it released as transcripts, I, I, and the timing around that, I, I, I think that's another issue. Right. But the reality is the public does have a right to know, and I think the public should know in this okay, case. Okay, fair enough. Uh, because of the debate over what constitutes an act of terror, whether this is one, you believe it should be released right now. What about you, Mr. Kessner? Well, I, I guess I'm pretty close to our pretty close to where James is on this as well. I, you know, I, I don't know how it advances uh, a, a whole lot. I think that we have to have a, a certain degree of uh, trust uh, in our officials and uh, uh, if they feel that, you know, it, it advances uh, public safety, then great. I think it's, uh, uh, it's been positive 
uh, to date. You know, we've seen steps taken, and you would mention the fact that uh, they're putting in the, the bulletproof doors. They're, they've armed uh, the uniformed officers here on the hill. Uh, they've taken uh, steps to uh, provide additional security here. So I think that that's of benefit. But again, I think it, uh, uh, it lies with uh, we have confidence in our uh, police officials and the RCMP to uh, uh, j j rather than sensationalize what took place, uh, the, the risk, as James had said, about uh, copycat, uh, hmm. you know, starting to happen. I, I don't think anybody wants that. So, uh, but yeah, they we'll, had we'll promised it, it their, before. We'll I, mean, it I mean, them. people are asking for it because the commissioner gave a very detailed um, press conference saying they were going to release it. Now they're not. I, I just, I got to move on to something else, though. The, uh, Mr. Bazan, the Public Safety Committee is meeting right now on Bill C-44, the bill that would give more powers to CSIS to track Canadian citizens abroad and give the same anonymity to CSIS informants that's given to police sources. But let me just show you something. Minister Blaney today said he's working on a second bill that will give the RCMP more powers of preventative arrest. The problem is the commissioner of the RCMP, Bob Paulson, also said today he doesn't think more powers are needed. Let me just show you what the two had to say today. We will make a new power in the domain of uh, surveillance, detention and arrestation. We are currently working on that and this will come uh, in the near future. The counterterrorism uh, provisions that exist are uh, very strong and we need information. Mr. Bazan, he says they need the public to come forward with more information on, po on possibly radicalized <laughs> information, not more powers to arrest. How do Canadians sort out your government says they need more powers to lower the threshold? The police say, no, we don't. I think what uh, Commissioner Paulson said is that they have enough tools right now, but we want to ensure that they have everything in the toolbox possible to deal with the whole new changing environment that we have from a public safety standpoint. Uh, as we see the expansion of terrorist ideology, as we see an expansion of, of more Canadians being engaged uh, in what's happening in Syria and Iraq, uh, I think it is our responsibility as politicians to, to uh, debate and provide the the, the proper legislation and regulatory framework to uh, police agencies across this country no, but if the police to ensure that they that need they, it, though. Well, I think that we want to make sure that they have everything that they that at their disposal possible. Law-abiding citizens uh, don't have anything here to worry about. This is about targeting those individuals who are a threat to our safety here in Canada as well as abroad. All right. Uh Peter Julian, Roger Cousin, what do you make of that? Well, uh, we've, we've said from the very beginning that the, the key here is looking to, to, to enhance public security, but maintaining, and we feel very strongly about this, maintaining civil liberties. And, and that's an issue that uh, we, we bring to the forefront, certainly bringing the committee in terms of uh, C44, looking at amendments that provide that, the, that focus of ensuring civil liberties are maintained, because that's certainly where I think the vast majority of Canadians are. And we've not seen from the government, I think, a real willingness to work with the opposition to put into place uh, amendments that allow legislation to, to be made better. And so our concern with any other bill coming forward, whether the, the if, is, particularly if the RCMP is saying it's not necessary, is, is why the bills are being brought forward and why the government will not work, uh, because uh, the opposition is certainly open to that. Uh, Tom Mulcair has said that, uh, and uh, I think other party leaders have as well, uh, to work together with the opposition to make sure we have legislation that maintains civil liberties, a very important aspect uh, as we look at any security measures that need to be taken. Mr. Kuzner, where are you on this balance? Well, uh, being the third voice on the panel, uh, you know, I get to take a little bit from column A and a little bit from column B, and I think that, uh, you know, what James has said, uh, the, you know, Commissioner Paulson's comments today, saying that they do have the tools in the toolbox, uh, they, they think that... Uh, they're confident that they can do the job that's necessary. But again, I think the balance that Peter talks about, many Canadians are concerned about that, striking that balance between security, oversight, and as well, you know, impinging on civil liberties. So I would hope what we're seeing now, and I'm just following C44, the hearings on Twitter, and again, some good amendments being brought forward. It doesn't seem that there's a huge appetite on the part of the uh, government to accept any of the amendments. I got 30 seconds. A quick update, Mr. Bazan, on Jill Rosenberg. Reports about this Canadian born Israeli woman who went to fight with Kurdish forces. This is a picture of her in Syria. Foreign Affairs still hasn't been able to confirm whether she has or has not been kidnapped by ISIS. An hour ago, 
someone posted this on our Facebook page. I'll show you guys. I'm totally safe and secure. I don't have internet access or communication devices with me. For my safety and security, I can't reply regularly and only happen to have a chance to log in to see these BS stories. Ignore the reports that I have been captured. Um, we can't confirm or deny whether that's a true Facebook posting. Um, your comment on her safety or other Canadians, some Afghan vets um, who have gone over to fight with the, uh, the Kurds. Yeah, so Minister Baird earlier has said that, you know, we want to make sure we get solid confirmation uh, that, that she is okay and not just something that's been posted on social media. And as we all know, ISIL is extremely good at, at, at social media and could hack into that account quite easily. So we want to make sure that we, we get that. We are very concerned about her safety, but, you know, okay. I think that does come down to the, to the fact that, that this is a very dangerous location. Uh, we've told Canadians not to travel uh, to Syria and Iraq because of the, 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 the war that's going on. On there uh, with ISIL, uh, so uh, we want to make sure they understand that they're going there at their own risk, right. and, and and that uh, there isn't going to be any rescue missions or anything like that uh, for them when, when when if they do get captured. Okay, so so, so if they want to if they want to take be part of this, join the Canadian Armed Forces. For those that are vets, come back and and, and reenlist. And uh, I know that uh, General Tom Lawson will be more than happy to to employ you. All right, so no confirmation on that Facebook page. Uh, new reports of a, a Canadian CF-18 attack on ISIS. Can you give? Us details? Uh, so, yeah, there, there was an, another uh, uh, attack earlier today, uh, uh, that, that, or I guess yesterday, uh, that actually uh, helped uh, ground troops, uh, the Iraqi security forces, uh, in the south part of Mosul, uh, so just outside of the city, and uh, so the involved RCF 18s and, and uh, more details will come through in a technical briefing. Okay, no details yet on that, or much more than that. James Mazan, Peter Julian, Roger Kessner, I've got to leave it there. Right, gents, thanks so much. Thanks, Evan.